one. Welcome to Memorial Baptist Church this morning. Just a few announcements. First thing, if you are visiting our church for the first time or first time in a long time, pick up one of our visitor cards, fill that out and drop it in the offering plate when it comes by. We'd love to have a record of your visit. This week, uh, the youth are headed out on Wednesday to Sharando Lake for an afternoon hike. It's going to be a lot of fun, so uh, any youth come out and join us. Next week, uh, one correction in the bulletin, next week uh, it has our King's Dominion trip for July 11th. That's actually the 13th. It's not the 11th. If you show up on the 11th, you will be stuck here with me all day in the office. So that will be on July 13th. Uh, the times are going to be, we're going to be leaving at 8.30 in the morning and probably not getting back till about 8.30 or 9 o'clock that night. Let's open with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we come before you now, God, in, in your presence and in your house, Lord, and we thank you for your spirit in this place. And God, we pray that you would help and in, encourage each of our spirits to be one with you this morning. God, we pray that our worship would be a sweet sound in your ear and a sweet fragrance to you this morning, God. We thank you, Lord, this day as we celebrate our country. We thank you for the freedom that we have to, to worship you. We thank you for the men and women who have made the sacrifice to make that to be able. God, now as we enter into this time of worship, Lord, we pray that your spirit would just indwell this place and dwell our hearts and bring us to a point where we can worship you with everything that we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together, turn around and shake someone's hand and welcome them to church this morning. together everyone the star spangled banner oh we'll say can you Right, grab your hymnals this morning. We'll be singing nothing but patriotic songs, starting with page, uh, page 633, 633, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage. 
cottage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circles. righteous sentence by the dim and moody lamps our day is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah our God is marching on he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat he is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat oh be swift my soul to answer him be jubilant my feet our God is marching on glory glory Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live, make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, Glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. He is coming like the glory of the morning of the sun. He is wisdom to the mighty, he is honor to the brave. So the world shall be his footstool, the soul of wrong his slave. Page 630, page 630.
loved and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine till all success be nobleness and every That sees beyond the years Thine alabaster cities gleam Undimmed by human fears America, America God shed His grace on thee be seated. We're going to continue singing, so turn to page 634 while we have our give of our tithes and offerings as well. Page 634. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the I sing land where my fathers died land of the pilgrim's pride from every mountain side let freedom ring my native country the weekend of holiday and uh, a lot of us are out of town right now but you are here this morning we are looking forward to a great time of worship here at Memorial Baptist Church on our prayer list as we uh, remember people in our, our congregation continue to remember Francis Atkins um, uh, Irma Fretwell Wendell Carter's son Brady that are all three of them are, are dealing with cancer right now we want to lift them up uh, in prayer and also as they continue to recuperate from some of that also, uh, we want to express um, our condolences to uh, Richard Kirikoff. Uh, his mother, Louise Kirikoff, 104 years old in the 11 o'clock service, was the long, oldest attending person in our church. Uh, her memorial service will be this Friday at 11 o'clock here at Memorial Baptist Church. Also remember Ellen Carlton, uh, both her mother and father, uh, had a difficult time this week. Her, her mother had a pacemaker put in. Her father uh, had a fall and damaged his neck. They are both in uh, rehab in a center in uh, Danville. Uh, but they are going to have to uh, do a lot of care for their family. So remember, lift them up in prayer. Also, uh, remember in prayer, Karen Anthony in the loss of her mother. Her mother passed away this Friday. The funeral will be Tuesday at 11 o'clock at Henry's. Also, uh, Doris Boyer, continue to remember her son in North Carolina who's recuperating from a stroke. And also Carlton Harper's brother. Uh, we've been asked to remember 
uh, him in prayer. Uh, Dr. Lowell Gilbert um, is in very critical condition as well. Continue to remember our, our homebound members, also people that are recuperating from the recovering from the floods in West Virginia, that God continues to give us divine appointments to serve Him here in Stanton and throughout the world, in our leaders, in our communities, our state, and national government. Let's have a time of meditation that'll lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have lifted up to you the names of people that are struggling with health concerns, also people that have lost loved ones this week. Father, we ask for your strength, your healing of mind, body, and soul. We ask for your encouragement in their lives. Father, we, we thank you for leading us to be a, a caring church that is sensitive to the needs of other parts of the body of the believers. And Father, we lift up to you our, our homebound members, our people that would be here with us this morning if they physically could. Father, I pray that they will not feel disconnected from this church, but feel cared for. And Father, you have caused us to be a people on mission. And so as we go about being a part of that mission, I pray that you'll make our, our eyes, our spiritual senses aware of the opportunities that you provide before us. And Father, as we go into this weekend, we celebrate the 240th birthday of our nation. Father, it's not a perfect union, but it's it's our nation. It's a place that we are, are very, very passionate about, that we love deeply. Father, I pray that as believers, that we will have an impact on the direction of our nation. Father, we lift up to you people that are in places of leadership in our communities, our state governments, our national governments. For even those that, that do not know you as their Lord and Savior still, I pray that your spirit will influence their lives. And now, Father, as we go into this time of worship, as we open up the Word of God, make clear to us how we can be citizens in two kingdoms. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good morning. I encourage you to open up your Bibles to Luke, the fourth chapter. We'll be looking at verses 16 and 17 this morning. This is a two-part series. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in my prayer, it's, it's called How to Be a Citizen in Two Kingdoms. We'll talk about it a little bit this morning because we're having communion. We'll talk about it at length next week. Now, have, have you ever thought about the fact that you are a citizen in two Two kingdoms. Now, I know the United States is a republic, okay, but, but a, a, a form of, of government, a, a nation that we're a part of. And if you are a citizen of this, of this country, you have a, well, you're a citizen of this, this kingdom or republic. You have certain responsib responsibilities and loyalties to this nation. Also, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a part of the kingdom of God. It is very much a kingdom. It is not a republic. It does not have representative government. You don't vote on God. God is king. He is Lord in every aspect of that. It is a kingdom that existed before you were alive. It is a kingdom that exists right now. It is a kingdom that exists for all eternity. It, it, is, it is not necessarily a, a, a government, but it's a spiritual kingdom that very much has influence here on earth. And it's not something new. And when we have conflicts and struggles between two kingdoms 
our, our temporal kingdom and, and our present and eternal kingdom that we are part of, you are not in an unusual place. Because I will tell you that believers, followers of Jesus Christ, have always been in struggle to some degree between the two kingdoms. How do you do that? How, how do you how do you you how do you stay a, a a loyal citizen of this nation and also submit to the full lordship of Jesus Christ and how he speaks to us? Well, folks, we're not going to be able to ever cover all of that, but we, we do we are given some principles in the fourth chapter of, of Luke. Now, we don't have a PowerPoint this morning, but I do have some notes that you can follow along with inside your bulletin. Also, if you want to follow me along with in your, in your Bibles, uh, in the Pew Bibles, it is page 945. Let me read to you verse 16 and 17. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as usual. He entered the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written. And I'm going to stop right there. Now, here's what I want you to understand where Jesus is at. He is early in his ministry. He's 30 years old. Okay, he, I should say he's early in his public ministry. He has been doing some, some preaching and performing some miracles in Galilee, which is where he's from. But this is the first time the boy comes home. He comes to his home, back to his hometown church, really, we, we, they call it a synagogue, but, but, but he, he's, he's back in his home base. He's, he's back where he was raised in the synagogue. People know him. Probably over half the people looking at him that morning are related to him in one, one, one form or fashion or another. And so th- this, is a, this is a very intimate type of, of standing. And, and this is where he kind of comes out in his public ministry as the Messiah. Now, something I, I want to point out to you. I love it where it says here, this means a lot to me as a, as a pastor, he entered the synagogue where he had been brought up. He entered the synagogue where he had been brought up. Can I, just, just a little sideline here. Do you notice he was, he was raised in that synagogue? He was brought up to worship in that synagogue. He was brought up to study the Bible as they had it, the Old Testament, during that time. You may say, well, Pastor, it must have been very different, very much of a different worship service type of thing, and I'm sure they didn't have Sunday school. And, and you'd be sort of right. They didn't have a formal, a formal thing on Sunday school. and didn't call it Saturday school either. But, but they spent a lot of time studying the Word of God. How much? A lot more than we do. And Compared to other denominations, we study a fair amount. But most of the worship service was involved studying, speaking on, reading the Old Testament in different parts of it. Now, he was probably assigned a part of a certain certain, uh, uh, area of Scripture to read. But he chose this passage out of the 62nd chapter of Isaiah where the Messiah comes out and states what he is about. Verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom freedom to the captives and to recover sight to the blind and to set free the oppressed. Some of this I'll speak about next week, but here's a couple things I want to point out to you. First of all, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me. Jesus claimed to be Spirit anointed. Well, yeah, we know that. I mean, He's he's God in flesh. But what He's talking about when He's saying Spirit anointed is that He is hearing from God. God has, has anointed him, set him apart for something special. And folks, as, as a follower of Jesus Christ, as a, as a member of the, the kingdom of God, you too have been anointed by God to serve in a specific way. Are you the Messiah? Certainly you are not. 
but he has set you aside for something special. So how does this apply to your being a citizen of the United States of America? Well, here's your citizen action point. Seek to, seek to be spirit-filled and anointed as a citizen of the United States. What does that mean? Well, to be anointed and spirit-filled means that you are walking with God. And in order to be able to hear from God, you've got to be intimate with God. You cannot be intimate with anybody without spending time with them. Just like a relationship with anybody else, you don't have overwhelming moments of, of, of revelation when you spend time with individuals, but when it comes, it comes. It's the same way with God. As God gives you clarity according to His will, according to His purposes, He will give you understanding about what it means to be a citizen of this nation. And sometimes that means cooperation. Sometimes that means standing up and saying, this is wrong. Folks, you wouldn't be the first generation to do this. This is something historically, the people of God have historically been the moral conscience, not just of this nation, of all nations where they are significantly a part of what God is doing. Have, have, has, has the Christian church, have, have Christians done terrible things throughout history? Yes, they have. But folks, they weren't spirit-led on it. They weren't being ob obedient to God. They were listening more to their other citizenship than they were to their kingdom of God's citizenship. Let me share something with you also. The Spirit of the Lord is on me to preach good news to the poor. Jesus then said he would preach good news to the poor. And what, what Jesus was talking about is he addressed both material and spiritual poverty. Now, let me say this about material poverty. God has, and I know, I know some of you are going to have a problem with what I'm about to say, but God has a special sensitivity to people in poverty. You read it in the Old Testament, you read it in the New Testament. And I know that I'm speaking to, to a congregation that's primarily middle class. Some of you may even be considered wealthy. And I believe that, that God does not necessarily disinclude you because you have been materially blessed. Much of that has been from following spiritual principles, I do believe. But listen, one thing Scripture is very clear on is that when you oppress the poor, you go against the will of God. If you'd like for me to take time, I can show you in the Old Testament. I can show you in the prophets. I can show you in the books of the law. I can show you in things that Jesus said. I can show you things in the epistles. Jesus looks out for those in poverty. That's why the church of God needs to be sensitive for people that are in poverty. We are involved in meeting people's material needs as well as their spiritual needs. Folks, spiritual poverty is just as enslaving as material poverty. In fact, it's, it's far more deceptive. I mean, when you're in, in material poverty, you know that you're in material poverty. I've been there. Spiritual poverty, you can deceive yourself on that. But listen, you can't walk closely with God for very long before he starts real, he's pointing out to you the things that shackle you in your spiritual poverty. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit more exactly what it means to be a citizen in two kingdoms and what you do as a follower in Jesus Christ to be obedient to what he is leading you to do so that you can be, you can love both kingdoms and be a particularly obedient to what God is leading you to do in the kingdom of God. It's the Word of God that is inspired, God breathed through the Holy Spirit that allows us to understand 
what eternal truths are. It pulls us in together into something that crosses all cultures, all languages, all time even. That if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. And as something that we do to remind us of that is communion. Sometimes we call it the Lord's Supper. It's something that all believers, all Christian denominations around the world have always done. It reminds us that no matter how we feel about things politically, no matter where we are economically, no matter where we live, whatever language we speak, we still belong to Jesus Christ. We still belong to the kingdom of God. We're going to have to celebrate communion this morning. Let's take a moment of silence to, to prepare our hearts for receiving this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Will the deacons please prepare the table? come forward. My brothers in Christ, my fellow servants of the church, this represents the body of Christ. This reminds us that Jesus Christ came. He is God taken on flesh and dwelling among us. He came for the purpose that that body be broken it be the sacrifice for our sins. Take. This is the body. Is no remission of sin and so that's why Jesus Christ took the wine as he met with his disciples and reminded them that once what meant the shedding of a lamb's blood to protect the, the people of Israel from the angel of death now he is the lamb whose blood is shed in remission of sin so that while we taste death once we do not taste eternal death and so that we do not forget he reminds us to take in remembrance of him this is the Brothers, take and drink. Our Heavenly Father, we celebrate together the goodness of God. We celebrate together the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. Within this congregation and throughout the world, throughout all time, until we sit together at the table with our Lord Jesus Christ. In the eternal kingdom. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. 
If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, whether or not you're part of this congregation, whether or not you were a Baptist, if you are part of the kingdom of God, you are invited to come and participate in the Lord's Supper. Let's, take, let's have a word of prayer and then celebrate together. Father God, once again, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, we honor you, we remember you. Amen. I 
give you and love I leave now go and share it go in peace you are my body my hands and feet live in remembrance of me this is our freedom this is our This is our freedom. This was the cost. The blood he shed for you on the cross. The blood he shed for you on the cross. Thank you for coming to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church. Let's stand together as we remember that, that Jesus Christ is what binds us together. <laughs> bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together. God bless.